so dear students you are welcome again in this lecture and we continue with the water saving approaches in rice production and yesterday we discussed about system of rice intensification there are different strategies to save water one is genetic approach or genetic strategies other is your physiological strategies cultural practices water management cultural practices includes your agronomic practices or different methods of growing rice and how to manage the rice crop i told you all the management practices are going to affect the water productivity many of them can save water like addition of organic matter can save water and i already discussed in detail about the uh, methods genetic methods or improvement water management physiological approaches crop and soil management or cultural practices so in this genetic improvement we covered crop management you can have several methods of rice culture you can call it rice culture or you can call it rice cultivation you can call it rice production almost similar meaning similar meaning so uh, certain methods like saturated soil culture alternate wetting and drying ground cover rice production system gcrps it is in china system of rice intensification is started from madagascar also known as madagascar system of rice cultivation and for your information i just want to tell you that it is started in madagascar and now not many farmers are adopting it because initially they have harvested very high yields and then their soil their soil became barren because every time if you are harvesting 10 tons of grain or 8 tons of grain your soil get uh, exhausted soil get exhausted unless you replace those quantity of nutrients back into the soil so that is an issue with the system of rice intensification in madagascar and it is not that much popular now in the country of its origin then other approaches aerobic rice growing direct seeded rice under intensive cultivation methods or under intensive cultivation i will explain you what is aerobic rice in the next uh, uh, next presentation not presentation next ppt raised bed is another option on raised bed bed one can go for transplanting of the crop water management uh, we will discuss in detail later and certain physiological approaches and we have seen the role of varieties if you want to grow varieties under water shortage conditions or if you want to grow rice under water shortage then you need certain specific varieties varieties which are suitable for transplanting condition may not be suitable for direct seeding or where you you have or where you lack water supply so now system of rice intensification is one water saving uh, strategy or method of growing rice and uh, i discussed about the views of the proponents of uh, proponents of uh, sri in brief it is called as sri some people call it sri and this system has been extended to some other crop also so people perceive that it gives you high productivity reduced water requirement reduced gas emission several advantages are there as reported by supporters of sri and now you can see certain advantages proposed by promoters of sri we already discussed yesterday and history i was touching upon the history father uh, henry de lolen sj a uh, french priest in madagascar and he synthesized sri principles in 1983 so and then 1999 it reached china at nanjing agricultural university and 2003 it was introduced in india i started from hyderabad and then it went to tamil nadu um, i forgot the name of the scientist who was responsible for it and by 2007 it has spread to many asian and african countries that means uh, most of the uh, countries have started doing experimentation and kind of work in 
Uh, before I start for today's proceeding, I just uh, recommend you to read this book, Water Management in Irrigated Rice. This is 100 page book. Those students who have interest in water management in rice can read this book. I have already sent to all of you. And this is for a student's purpose. You can know many interesting facts about rice, about water management, and some other issues through this book. So those who are interested can go through this book. It is already available with you. I sent it. So now coming to the basic print. Yes, sir. We have received, sir. Uh, you received it? OK. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So that is fine. You, you can go through some pages of this book. At least uh, you will find some information on water management and many other aspects worth reading book, you should read it. Uh, now uh, we see uh, different uh, basic practices. So as I told you that you can call it conventional rice culture. Conventional rice culture is your traditional production system, or you can see TPR. Sometimes it is called as transplanted rice, transplanted rice, TPR. So TPR, transplanted rice, means you puddle your land, plow it in standing water of, say, 8 to 10 centimeters, level the field, have some burns, and transplant the crop at uh, routine uh, transplanting. That is uh, normal spacing uh, recommended for varieties in different regions. Normally, it is 20 by 10, and it can be 20 by 15 also for hybrids and high-yielding varieties. So let us see the differences in SRI and conventional rice culture or transplanted method, common method. So in SRI, very young seedlings are taken. Normally their age is less than 14 days, less than 14 days. And here in conventional rice culture, it is mature seedling of three to four weeks. So you have seen, I have told you, uh, discussed you about uh, different methods of nursery preparation. In that case, you have seen normally the seedling age is 18 to 20 days when you go for transplanting. If your nursery is by mat method, mat nursery method. If you have wet nursery method, the normal uh, age of the seedling is 20 to 25 days. So, or you can say three to four weeks. Uh, and now question comes that why they want young seedling in SRI? Why young seedlings are preferred in SRI? Can anyone answer it? What is the philosophy of SRI promoters or SRI supporters or SRI proponents to have young seedlings? Any sir, guess? Young seedling, sir, young seedling means early establishment, early tillering, and mass number of tillering. That's why they are preferring young seedling. Very good. So yeah, said, and in young seedlings, there will be less transplanting stock. Less transplanting, transplanting stock. Very good. So both of you are right. And this is additional point given by you. And you are also correct. So what, what did he say? That establishment is fast, quick establishment. And also the transplanting shock is less. So this is true. This is true. So these are the reasons. And further, uh, trilling is more. So this young seedling is important from that perspective. And it is also suggested that if you have a young child who does not know much, so the young child, children, they will not have any enemy. They will have uh, friends and they are very quick to learn. Most of the things we learn in our life, 50% we learn in childhood, you know, most of the things. So a young seedling can easily accommodate or can easily adjust to the new environment. So that is why they prefer young seedling. This is the philosophy behind taking the young seedling. There they take mature seedling. Then here, single seedling is taken in SRE method and they are transplanted very shallow, one to two centimeter because they do not have sufficient roots. Roots are underdeveloped, they are not very high growth of root, they are just 14 days old. So they are transplanted just one to two centimeter in the mud. And the field is not flooded. It is not full of water. Uh, it is just having uh, no standing water. 
when you go for transplanting. At the most, you can have five millimeter, very thin or insignificant layer of water can be have. And then they should be gently transplanted in unflooded nursery. So single seedling, but in conventional, uh, now you take two to three seedling or three to four seedlings per hill are transplanted uh, under flooded conditions. There you will have uh, standing water, then you transplant. So this is true. So now question comes, why single seedlings in SRI? What is the philosophy? Yes. Sir, sir, in sin single seedling, there will be less competition. That's why more tillering and that will be in full yield potential. That is the maximum potential of a single seedling that will be expressed. Very good. So uh, he says that there will be very little competition or there will not be any competition among the seedlings. This is true. If you transplant three or four seedlings in one place, they will have common surface or common soil or common soil around them. So their root can compete for water, for nutrients and other things. But if you have single seedling, then whatever resources are there around the root, they are meant for single seedling. Therefore, competition will not be there among the seedlings if you have single seedling. So this is the philosophy behind it, um, having single seedlings. Um, yeah, many times you see, uh, you have uh, limited resources. Resources are limited. A, a family, a family having one children, just one child, then all kind of resources or facilities with the parents are meant only for one child. If you have that family have three child, four child, children, then those resources are distributed. So kind of competition happens with the scarce resources. Therefore, single seedling is preferred by SRI method. This is basic principle. And these are known as components of system of rice intensification. You can call them components of SRI. You can call them principles of SRI. And finally, when you do it, when you adopt these principles in the field, they are practices. They become practices. Then sparse plant population means wide spacing. So in the beginning, uh, they suggested 30 by 30 centimeter, 40 by 40 centimeter. And finally, they settled for 25 by 25 centimeter. So in SRI, under almost 99% cases now, across the world, across the varieties, 25 by 25 centimeter spacing is recommended and it is accepted. So for SRI, spacing is 25 by 25 centimeter in a square pattern. So it is in a square pattern and so that all the seedlings will get equal share of resources or equal space and uh, good light, uh, good light uh, penetration because uh, there will be sufficient space between seedlings. So that is how this sparse plant population is recommended. So it is clear here that you got a young seedling and one seedling in one place. And if you remember when we used to calculate the seed rate, so you required to know the number of seedlings. If you plant two times three, uh, two seedling, three seedling, then your seed rate increases. But if you reduce the number of seedling in a place, in a hill, then your seed rate re reduces. So here are two things. One is in one place, you will have single seedling and also your spacing is wider. So therefore the seed rate may be less. So SRI people say that uh, seed rate is reduced to five to 10 kg per hectare. So this kind of seed is, this quantity of seed is enough. However, in uh, conventional rice culture, you remember the seed rate was 20 to 25, 25 to 30, and 30 to 35 kg per hectare for different varieties, depending upon the thousand seed weight. So in general, you get more seed rate under conventional rice culture and less seed rate in SRI method. The fourth principle is soil aeration. In SRI, soil aeration is preferred, maintained in vegetative growth, particularly during the vegetative growth period, soil is required to be aerated. Oxygen should reach the soil, air should reach the soil. So in this case, therefore, avoiding continuous soil saturation. 
So in this case, there are cycles of dryness and cycles of wetness. So when you apply water, the soil should be saturated only. And after saturation, you stop water. There should not be any standing water during the vegetative growth phase. The soil needs to be saturated. So once you saturate, soil reaches field capacity, then you do not apply water. And then the water uh, depletion will be there, maybe 10, 15% depletion of available water, and then you can apply irrigation. So you get some oxygen into the soil. Alternate wetting and dry throughout the life, uh, throughout cycle is preferred. That is mostly under uh, vegetative growth. But when panicle initiation is start, when reproductive stage is start, you should have a thin layer of water that is one to three centimeter, even in SRI. You need to maintain a thin layer of water in SRI after the panicle initiation. That may be one to two or one to three centimeter. In uh, CRC, you know, always it is suggested to keep some standing water of five plus minus two centimeters. And here in SRA, weeds are controlled with rotary hoe. So rotary hoe is a hoeing machine that can be manual and that can run by power, diesel or petrol. So controlled with a rotary hoe that aerates the soil. So it is mandatory to go for cono weeding in SRI. Uh, and eliminate weed and weeding can be done three to four times before canopy closes. But normally it is two times. Uh, it should be done two times under SRA. First, uh, after 20 to 25 days of transplanting. Second, 40 to 45 days after transplanting. Hoeing should be done by rotary weeder or cono weeder in SRA. In conventional rice culture, you control normally weeds by chemical methods or manual plus chemical methods. Uh, in SRA, compost is preferred. One, one should use preferably compost <clears throat> rather than the chemical fertilizer. In CRC, conventional rice culture, you mostly use chemical fertilizer or INM practices. So these are the five bas basic principles. And this cono weeding or weeding of weeds uh, results in mixing of weeds. It has two advantages. One is that cono weeding, you are mixing the weeds into the soil. They will decompose and provide organic matter to the soil. And also when you uh, do the weeding by cono weeder, it does churning of the soil. And during the churning process, cert certain quantity of oxygen enters into the soil. So therefore, um, the soil roots, are, uh, plant roots are oxygenated some oxygen enters. So this cono weeding has two advantages. One is it helps in aeration and also controlling the weeds, mixing the weeds. Another thing is that if you suppose instead of compost, you have just, just you have seen there are five, six principles, six principles of SRA, young seedling, single seedling, uh, square planting, soil aeration, weeds, compost. These are the principles. So suppose one principle is missing a farmer is not able to maintain one principle or two principles, then it can be called as modified SRA. Suppose compost is not available, farmer is not using it, then you can call it modified SRI. Means you are adopting all other principles except you are, except manure. Now you are using chemicals or fertilizer in place of manure. Then you can call it modified SRA. So any question on these differences uh, and any, any point you want to ask at, the, at this moment, if you have any question, any point of discussion you can have. Yeah, Subrata, any question? In case of SRI, fertilizer is not recommended. Yeah. Actually, in SRI, uh, the philosophy is that uh, uh, you should, in, uh, in the two things are important in this. One is root growth. Emphasis is given on root growth. And secondly, microbial population. They want to increase the microbial population. So this is the thrust, actually, of SRI. 
uh, root growth, why the root growth will be better under these circumstances? Because uh, you are having wider spacing and you are making less supply of water. And as general principle, if you have too much of water in the soil, root growth is affected because root do not get oxygen. Of, okay, rice roots get oxygen through some system, but uh, still they do not get free oxygen supply. So uh, these uh, rice roots make a mat near the soil surface. So rice uh, root growth is less under normal planting. However, in SRI, the much better root growth is there. So there is no doubt about it because of scarcity of water, little less water is there compared to conventional. And secondly, this uh, aeration. So aeration is done by weeding. So it further increases the root growth. And also, you, if you add organic matter, I'm coming to your point. If you add organic matter, one thing is that you are mixing the weeds, organic matter level will change, slightly change. And if you use compost, then your microbial growth may be more. If you get more microbial go growth because of aerated conditions, then these microbes are very, very helpful. These microbes may release certain hormones, you know, these microbes release indol butyric acid, IBA, and some other growth hormones. Those can further increase the root growth. Those microbial interactions with the rice roots are very, very important in SRA. So therefore, if you add compost, then microbial growth is increased, and further it is assisted by aeration. Therefore, in SRA, you get better root growth, and organic manures or organic matter is preferred over the fertilizer. Is that clear? Is this point understood? Yes, or you need yes, any, any further clarification? So this is to enhance the microbial growth. And I'm not adding, adding anything from my side. So these are the principles explained by the people. And whatever philosophy we discussed here, it is from the proponents of SRI. So now, and they say that it is a different paradigm shift, paradigm shift in production. In green, green revolution, emphasis was, now your point comes again. You can see it carefully. In green revolution, the strategy was based on uh, having hybrids, having some new variety, hiding varieties, short stature varieties, and use of uh, chemicals, fertilizers, and pesticides. Because of these two, three inputs, the green revolution came. But now these SRA people says that we give more emphasis on improved phenotype. How the improved phenot phenotype will improve? Because SRA intensifies management, changing the way that plants, soil, water, and nutrients are managed. These are the major resources. And to promote the growth of root system, you can see now point has come. So here these principles will lead to promotion of root systems and to increase the abundance and diversity of soil organisms. So all these principles are basically aimed in promoting the root growth and as well as microbial growth or growth of the soil organism. And these will result, the improved root growth and microbial activity will change the phenotype. It will give you a strong and sturdy plants. It can give you more tilling and so on. Now you can see so far tilling is concerned. This picture was taken in Nepal in 2004. And this is, uh, you can see the number of tiller. There may be around 25 plus tillers. If you have conventional rice culture, normal planting, in that you get normally nine to 10 tillers, nine to 10 tillers per plant. But in SRA, you can get 20, 25 tillers. And some people have reported up to 70, 80 or 100 tillers per hill which is beyond imagination, which is not acceptable. Now you see this, this picture I got from Dr. Alapati Satyanarana from Hyderabad. And he was the first to take this kind of picture. On the right side, you can see roots from SRI grown plants. Left side, this is from transplanted product, conventional rice culture. So right side, you can see roots are white in color. They are thick, their biomass is more their root length is more, you are seeing the differences. On the left side, you see roots are small 
and their diameter is looking to be less and they are less in number, root length is also less. And you can see the color, color is kind of rotting has happened. So white root means active root. If you get changes of color and decaying, in decaying uh, root decaying happens, they start decomposing. So you can see SRA gives you better roots compared to conventional roots. So it is not new. Car from India, car and co-worker in 1974, they have reported that uh, rice roots in saturated versus well-drained soil. Saturated here means a lot of water is there in the soil and well-drained means aerated soils. So by the onset of flowering, a majority of the roots in hypoxic soil, if you get your soils fully saturated with water, then your root growth is affected due to supply or poor supply of oxygen and roots will degenerate, they will decompose and continuous flooding and hypoxia produce necrosis in plant roots and affect the functioning of the root. So this is a fact that under uh, water logging conditions, your root growth is less compared to aerobic conditions. Now you see this is hypothetical picture from UFO. UFO uh, is an American scientist who spread SRA in the world. He is responsible for all the aspects of SRA promotion of SRE and so many uh, uh, good work was done by him on SRE. So in this case picture, you can see on X axis, you have water availability. If you move from left to right, the water availability is increasing. So in the beginning, you get rain fed systems, suboptimal condition, dry condition, water supply is not sufficient. In the middle part, you get optimum supply on the right side, extreme right side, the water supply is very high and you get anaerobic systems. So these anaerobic system give you hypoxic soil, no oxygen in water or soil, microbiologically limited because of anaerobic condition, the growth is affected. Methane emission is another problem and certain poisonous substances are also included, uh, also uh, produced under these circumstances. And uh, in rain fed system, uh, your growth is less uh, and the yield is also less. Just a moment. Thank you. So uh, uh, you can see in the central central part. In the central part, the water availability is normal, neither flooded nor dry. So you get healthier plants, healthier soils. So this picture tells you, if you increase the water, um, water supply, it is not good for plant, it is not good for soil, it is not good for organism. And yields are also low. So this, is suggest this was suggested by you four. And you can see one more picture of uh, tillering. Uh, almost 30, 40 tillers may be there. And you see the root growth in this particular picture. See on the uh, comparison of uh, plant growth and root growth on the right side or on my left side, it is SRI. On the right side, non-SRI. So you can see differences in number of grains in each panicle, plant height, color, and tilting, and also root growth. So uh, you can see uh, the differences in root growth. On the right side here, uh, you get SRI on the left side, it is non-SRI. So what are the advantages of SRI overall? So these are the advantages uh, suggested by proponents of SRI. First is that root growth and tilling is increased. So it is interesting uh, to know that in SRI root growth increases, there is no doubt about it. And tilling also increases. Normally it means you will have at least 10 to 15% more tillers in SRI. To be realistic, panicle density also increases. Panicle density does not mean that uh, number of panicles per meter square area. It means the denser panicle means per unit length of panicle you get more grains. So grain number increases per panicle. Grain filling in increases, grain weight increases, grain quality also improves because the, they say that plant is getting good a supply of oxygen, better root growth. 
So plant can extract larger quantity of nutrients and uh, the, if plant is not short of nutrients, then it will give you uh, better grain filling, better grain quality. And of course, water saving is there because they say that uh, water for water management during vegetative phase, you need not to keep standing water and just keep the soil near saturation. So therefore water saving is there, there is no doubt about it. And seed saving is also there and factor productivity improves. That is why it is system of rice intensification. Your factors are land level, labor capital management and from capital you buy certain inputs like seed or fertilizer. So seed, fertilizer, water, these are your factors of production and productivity of these factor increases. So these are the important advantages. Further advantages are less lodging. Since the root growth is more and you get uh, uh, better health of the plant because you get fewer pests and disease attack also. If your plant is strong, it can tolerate insect pests and disease also and therefore less lodging. No need to purchase new seed, lower cost of production. And if the cost of production is lower, on account of water saving and also on account of reduced seed rate. So a lower cost of per production will result in profitability, reduced risks and good establishment of wheat in rice wheat system. So these are some of the noted advantages of SRI. And 2003 onwards, Tamil Nadu was the first uh, Tamil Nadu and ANG Ranga Rao Agriculture University, Andhra. They started uh, work on SRI together and they did not do any research work. They taken it to the field straight way. Sorry for that. <clears throat> so now it is started spreading in Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and many areas of India. And people said the yield were very high. So that was the problem with SRI, that in India, in initially in 2004, these people have reported very high yield, yields up to 15 tons per hectare. You can see the yield, the last, the last column, just to see the last column in different countries in Bangladesh, 12 ton in Cambodia, China, 13 tons. So yields were very high to believe in SRA, initially reported by people. In India also, you can see uh, at different centers, see the last column. It is the yield advantage, means extra yield over the conventional method. For example, in Andhra, Raya Sima region, see the last column. Yield was 4.73 more than the conventional. In Telangana, it was 2.5 tons more than the conventional. So such kind of uh, results created doubt in the mind of the people, whether can it be true or not. So again, example of yields, more than 15 tons per hectare in Madagascar. Of course, in Madagascar initially, some yields were high, but later on, they could not sustain the yields. After a few years, yield started declining. See, in this case, LP Yuan, father of hybrid rice, he's, he, he got about 16 tons. The same hybrid was giving 11 tons or 12 tons per hectare, but LP Yuan tried SRI and he found it 16 tons per hectare, same hybrid, by changing the method of production. And there are many more reports uh, you can find in the literature that the yields in SRI were very high, high. But we also conducted one experiment in IERI in 2004 to 7, 8. And then we found that yields were not the, that high. Yields were lower, uh, uh, means uh, out of three years, yields were lower in two years. In two years, yield were much less in SRI compared to uh, conventional rice culture. So we got conflicting results. Across the world, there are people uh, who got good, good yields, but there are people who got bad yields also. So, but uh, literature says like this. So as a student, what you need to remember, you need to remember that water shortage is there. How, what is the extent of shortage of water, number one? Number two, what are the differences in SRI and conventional rice culture? Why there is need for SRI? And what has happened to SRI in India and world? So I can say it has almost gone from the map of the world. It is just for the namesake, some people are
carrying it, but uh, SRI is no more in practice in uh, anywhere. So it was told to give a lot of benefit. Now, uh, even the politicians at that time, in 2004, 5, 6, they promoted it. Politicians were happy to, to sell the technology to the farmers. Like today, you are young, very young people. And today, you know, two technologies, we are talking a lot about ZBNF, zero budget natural farming. A lot of questions are asked, newspaper, magazines, students are worried. And friends, you will remember my words. After a few years, we will lose it. We will not talk about ZBNF because it is a false technology. It is uh, away from the fact. It is much away from the fact. So therefore, but it is it is a uh, uh, hot uh, topic now. These days, it is very hot topic. People are talking about it or they are being forced to talk about it. So politicians can, can take advantage. This is SRI, how you can mark the lines and do the transplanting in SRI. Single seedling at the square planting. This is cono weeder. You can go for uh, weeding in the uh, field. So conclusions are that grain yields, uh, there are mixed results. Many places you get higher yields, but many places you got lower yields also. But one thing is sure that if yield, whether yields are low or high, but water saving is surely there, 20 to 30%. And since the water saving is there, therefore water productivity is more in SRI and less emission of uh, greenhouse gases. But it has got some limitations also, like seedling mortality. In the beginning, seedlings die because seedlings are very young. And if there is rainfall or flooding, they will die. High labor cost because nursery preparation and handling of young seed and weed infestation, nematode infestation, multiple micronutrient absence and all these, I will discuss in next the limitations of SRE because now time is going to be over and uh, I will start next link. And there you can have your questions and then we will, uh, I will answer your questions. So I will start next link and stop the 